Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts, bringing you one HF band at a time in this mini-series. And so far, everybody's been commenting that they love it. It's helping them out, the newcomers to the hobby, and the seasoned professionals. Leave your comments below, give a thumbs up for the effort of this video, and tell me if it's helping you and what you like about it and which band you think appeals to you so far. So this video is about the 40 meter band, and we'll talk about this in this video. A little bit more to talk about than something like 10 or 12 meters. They're getting a little bit longer in five minutes, but hopefully packed full of information for you without blowing your mind and really scaring you away. That's the goal here. So 40 meters, we'll talk about it, where you can operate, what you can see on 40, and what I do on 40. Now, 40 meters, I like to think of as a nighttime version of 20 meters. 40, you can use day and night, all year round. It's open somewhere. It's always open somewhere. 40 will give you band conditions, maybe three, four, 500 mile contacts during the height of the day. And at night, really opens up to give you DX. So people that use 20 may move to 40 as the sun goes down. So we'll talk about it and stay tuned for the next videos coming up in the series, but let's get into 40 meters. Wow, 40 looks a little more comprehensive on this chart than something as simple as 17 meters, right? 40 meters spans from 7.0 to 7.3 megahertz, and depending on the license class you have, determines the operating privileges across the band. On this band only, the difference between general and extra could mean a lot for me, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So the people on 20 meters that are doing their daily grind, they're operating CW during the day, every day they get on and look for new contacts, new stations. When the band closes, Typically, those operators move to 40 and continue on. I like to think of 40 and 20 as like a brother and sister. Only 20 is during the day, and 40 generally is at night. Now, with that said, 40 is also a lower side band. And you remember, we're talking about all these up here, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, we're all upper side band. Now you're going into lower side band. So most radios will automatically put you there, and if it doesn't, Make sure you're on lower sideband so you can hear the station that you're wanting to tune in. As a general, I could talk from 7.175 to 7.3, but 40 meters is a shared band. So that means anything in my situation from 7.2 up to, to the upper end of the band, normally I have S9 plus 40 of AM shortwave broadcast and it blankets that part of the band so I have this little tiny section of 7.175 to 7.2 before I get up into the AM broadcast which you really can't call CQ or hear anybody over that now if you want to check out a cool video look on my channel for the WRMI uh, shortwave transmitter site tour that I took and made a video on so you can see where those signals are coming from if you want to see acres and acres of rhombic and wire antennas, check that video out. Big transmitters. So if somebody told me, if, if this was the only band I can operate, 40 meters, I might consider becoming an extra right away. When someone says, well, extra, you have to be an extra to enjoy everything on ham radio. Absolutely not. Tired of hearing it. Uh, extra is great, but move yourself up to extra. Plenty of general stuff to be had before you have to rush to extra. But if this is the only band and you're plagued with all the shortwave, it might be a good idea to move to extra to get a little more of this room right here to talk on. Now, depending on where you're watching this video or depending on where you're operating, in what region determines maybe you have phone portion here in the lower portion of the band where I only have CW and data. Or maybe you're a technician class and you're upgrading the general, but you're awesome at CW and you want to brush up on your skills with the real guys on CW. Well, with 200 watt limit, you can operate all the CW that you want on 40. Big gun stations, newcomers, anybody on CW on 40 is a pleasure to work. Now, again, depending on the region, you might have a spot where you can't work. So pay attention to the 40 meter band here on this chart, and let's look at what else you can do on 40. Boy, this looks like the 20 meter suggested frequencies we showed you. There's a lot of stuff going on 40 meters. Let me show you a couple things here. 
with CW being in the lower portion, of course. One thing, one of the things that you'll find on 40 meters, check this out here. Automatic digital stations. Now, you want to avoid these frequencies wherever you see automatic digital stations because uh, there is something, a wind link is something I'm going to get into that I've done plenty of times in the day on 2 meters and on HF. Sending email over HF on 40 meters uh, is quite effective, and we'll show you that later. But these automatic digital stations you won't hear unless someone like me gets on there and starts to... Uh, request you know to send an email through this digital station and then all of a sudden it's covering up your cw or your other digital mode that you may be using so you want to avoid places that have automatic digital stations even if the frequency sounds clear at that time and we'll get into email over hf later uh psk 31 sits at 70 dot or 7 dot 70 right here and there you know it, it does say also down here 70 I keep saying 7040. Uh, for PSK in other countries, you know, most popular in the UK right here. So 7.70 .70 is where you'll find a lot of PSK. And then right around there, just up from that, uh, Olivia JT65. Guess what's right around JT65? You got it. Massive FT8 signals on 40 meters at night. Um, so moving up here, there's a lot of nets that have been on those frequencies for years. So, you know, those nets, they're on 40 every day and night, early in the morning, late at night. Um, and just, I, I've never gone through and done a lot of this on 40. So, worth taking a look at and, you know, checking out. They have AM calling frequencies here. They have uh, AM up here. AM, a lot of times, is in the upper side, upper portion of the sideband on some bands, you know. So, because, I mean, you run an AM where everybody's on sideband, you're going to occupy a lot more bandwidth, and that could, you know, uh, interfere with people on sideband using a little more narrow bandwidth. So they kind of keep it towards the top. But, hey, look, AM South America. So look through here and check out some of the things that uh, are happening on 40 meters. We'll take a look at the DX Maps website again and give you an idea. Now, remember, this is not a supplement to determine if you're going to turn your radio on or not. This is only people putting in their information as a spot here to show that they've made a contact over here so that you can kind of see there is activity out there. But this does not represent what activity or band conditions is at your QTH. So make sure you get out there and call CQ. Don't just look at a map. So anyways, looking at this, Remember we talked about the gray line on 20 meters. Here's the gray line here. The sunset is a, just about upon me in Florida here. You can see the line, sunset's approaching. Now with that, because this is, again, a band that is a nighttime band, you know, daytime will give you local and a few hundred miles of, of contact, and nighttime will give you some good DX. Well, look what's happening here. The band is opening starting here, and you can see people making contacts or putting spots on the map to Europe as the band is opening here. Now, if you look over on the West Coast, they haven't really experienced that just yet, but we'll flash forward here in this video in a couple hours and see what happens when the gray line gets over here to the West Coast of the United States, and we'll see how the band conditions or the spotter network reports the changes between daytime and darkness here on the Western United States. Look what's happening a couple hours later. So here's the gray line here now. And all these stations over here now are having fun with this gray line magic here. Working across to the Pacific Islanders, Japan, and Australia and such. So you saw a couple hours ago, wasn't a whole lot going on over here. And now it's opening up for them. It's like magic, that gray line. It's almost like a cult following. You know, everybody's saying, hey, turn your beams to the west. Gray line. <laughs> And everybody started operating over here, you know. And that's only, again, that's only the people reporting the spots here. That's not what's everybody, you know, it's not accounting for the 5,000 people that are not participating in this site. So a lot of people working now with that gray line. I'll put this link in the description, too. I think we've given enough traffic to the West Mountain Radio site for a little while for their antenna calculator. So we'll try another one, KWARC Online, Simple Calculated Dipole. Now, 
As we're going lower in frequency, I've said before, the antennas get longer. Let's see how long an antenna would be for 40 meters. And we'll just go roughly 7.200. Now, total length will be 65 feet. A lot different than 16 or 17 for your 10 meter dipole, right? That's getting longer. Can you fit a 65 foot dipole? One leg is going to be 32 and a half feet. But another thing I haven't mentioned yet, because we get into later videos on how to make a simple dipole, what you have to remember is the height above ground with these dipoles. You want to be at least a quarter wave or more above the ground. What would a quarter wave of a 65 feet dipole be? Right here. Somewhere around 32 feet above ground to make it an effective. And yes, it will work 10 feet off the ground. It's just not going to be as good. So if you can't get it higher above the ground, then you can do what you can. But in this situation, you want to, you know, a quarter wave on a 10 meter dipole would be eight feet above the ground. That's, that's doable for a lot of people. But what happens when you get into something like a 40 or an 80 meter antenna above the ground at a reasonable height to make it effective gets a little bit trickier. So something to keep in mind. So what could you expect from the 40 meter band as a newly licensed amateur radio operator? Well, I guess that question depends on what do you want to do? There's so much happening. Let's break it down. Do you want to be a part of a net every day? There are so many nets on 40 meters. There's people that only operate nets. There's people that operate nets before the sun comes up, and then they operate nets when the sun goes down. There's people that operate nets locally across their state with the same guys on the same frequency every day during the day. There are people that are serious DX chasers. There are people that like to chew the rag from when the sun goes down, they start jumping on, and they're on until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. They're maybe retired, and they get their coffee, and they get their beer or whatever they got, and they pass it around a round table for hours upon hours. Some of them are welcoming. Some of them are not. So listen a little bit to some of these rag chew round tables before you throw in there and ask how your signal is because some of the guys immediately respond with, well, we're not giving you a Raji report. This isn't channel 19. And other guys come in and say, hey, sounds great. Uh, welcome. We, we sit on here every night. So there's a place, you know, for everybody. You may run across that guy that we talked about on 20 meters that maybe has $12,000 of amplifiers and radios and makes you feel like you're lesser of an individual because you're on a wired dipole QRP. Now, that will happen. Don't get discouraged. Just move along. But QRP is one thing that's kind of tough on 40. If you're new to the hobby and you started with QRP, you may find QRP better on the higher frequencies than you will on the lower ones because of the noise. Uh, 40 is usually open somewhere, anytime. But the, the winter time seems to be a lot quieter on 40. The noise floor comes down. 40 and the lower bands are also susceptible more to power line noise, uh, lightning crashes, static crashes, and such. So... Consider your station being wiped out when you're on QRP by an S9 static crash in the summer. So 40 may not be your best uh, QRP band. But 40, uh, you know, ha every radio has 40. Every, almost every antenna has 40. So 40 is a very common place to be. And uh, there's a lot more you can do on a 40 other than talk on CW or talk on phone or work CW or digital. As we talked before, and you'll see in future videos, you could do HF email, you could do uh, uh, different, you know, low signal propagation reporters and such. I find myself on 40 not using phone, but only using digital or possibly CW if I decide to get practicing on CW. At field day, when uh, everybody's gone to bed and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I know Dwayne is usually up on 40 meters, and I'm trying to stay awake with a lot of iced coffee to join him on 40 because that's where it's at in the middle of the night. So other than that, um, I use 40 for maybe digital modes, a lot of PSK, a lot of Ritty, a lot of uh, Hellschreiber, Olivia Contessia, and so on. So thanks for watching. The next video might not appeal to everybody, but I want to touch on it. The 60 meter band, something that a lot of people haven't operated. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. And 7-3 from KJ4YZI.